The infamous raid on the Jedi Temple. Welcome to Dank Ferric. Today I've got another Star Wars what if for you. I'm going to give my own spin on it. And get this, it'll be what if the raid on the Jedi Temple had failed. We'll begin this one as we always do and set it up with a bit of immersive storytelling. If you end up enjoying the content, do me a favor and hit that like button to help get this Star Wars what if out to more people. But without anything further ado, let's get into it. This is what if the raid on the Jedi Temple of Order 66 failed? You must move quickly. The Jedi are relentless. If they are not all destroyed, it will be civil war without end. First, I want you to go to the Jedi Temple. We will catch them off balance. Anakin Skywalker, now Darth Vader, received his first true command from his new master, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Sidious. With these new orders, the former Jedi General would go to where his troops were garrisoned on Coruscant. It was here that he'd collect the 501st Legion and march on the Jedi Temple. The raid begins. In our version, the Jedi were prepared. You see, a young aide to the Chancellor witnessed it all through a security recording from his own desk in the main corridors outside Palpatine's office. He saw the betrayal of Anakin, the death of Mace Windu, and the strange powers of Chancellor Palpatine. So in fear and concern, the boy rushed to contact the Jedi Temple and inform them of what he saw, passing on the security footage. Not only was Mace Windu now dead, but Anakin Skywalker would be heading to the Jedi Temple to destroy all of those within its walls. This would give the Jedi short but somewhat ample time to prepare. After all, in the original attack, the Jedi were caught heavily off balance, just as Palpatine said and predicted. But this time in our story, they weren't as off guard as the new Emperor would have hoped. As Anakin and his clone troopers of the 501st marched up the steps, they would find themselves under fire. Jedi Temple security forces were small, but they were effective and they were elite. They wouldn't hesitate to hold back as this senior Jedi at the temple suggested. Yes, Jedi are all for defense and never offense, but this was war for them. This was potential extinction. Though Vader ordered his men to push forward regardless of the new security forces that they spotted, the security forces rained down upon them with sniper fire, and Anakin would deflect these blaster bolts as he strode forward with confidence, even when dozens and dozens of his own troops were falling to his left and right. But the 501st were many. It would take more than snipers of the temple security force to end their incoming strike. This is when the second wave would emerge, an automated wave. Perhaps as Anakin and his troops finally made it to the top of the steps, something awaited them. Automated turrets. They would push against the upcoming clone force, sending out waves of red bolts at the blue and white clones. It was with this wave and the snipers above that the 501st Legion would begin to see actual loss, heavy loss, but still determined dark and twisted, Anakin, now Vader, pushed ahead. Finally, we reach the point of entry. Jedi Temple security snipers dead in their perches, some of them at least. Many turrets down. Clone troopers littered dead across the ground. But Anakin would be ready to do what must be done. He would not hesitate and he would show no mercy. It would be in this next phase of the battle that he would find the many Jedi of the Temple ready and waiting, a sea of them in their brown robes, yellow, blue, and green lightsabers. And as they clash, the losses were met on both sides, both from the clones and from the Jedi. But ultimately, the living Jedi, temple defenses, and security forces would keep the raid from advancing. The Sith would fail, at least for now. Now it's time to do this. Let's pause the storytelling of this alternative version of events. Let's look at what could come from this as the Empire pushes its rise forward, and that would be a Jedi Rebellion. The thing Palpatine fabricated would become his worst enemy as he birthed the Galactic Empire into the galaxy. However, Palpatine was extremely influential, 
both in the Senate and with the citizens of the Republic, and it would mean that soon after this raid that he would reorganize the Republic into the Empire, and it also means that he could still label the Jedi as traitors and terrorists, that he could convince thousands of star systems of the same and many of its citizens. But that wouldn't make the fight ahead any easier or have it end anytime soon. This would change the decades ahead drastically so. If the Jedi are anything, they are hope. Or in a galaxy where they are marked as traitors, they are the potential future of hope. And Palpatine would want that wiped away. The hunt would be tried and true, of course. The propaganda effort would be pushed even harder than before. And bounty hunters would be out in force. With more Jedi about, the hunts are more plentiful, and the chances for high payment from the Empire is there. And lastly, finding and turning living Jedi to Inquisitors would also occur quite more regularly, as it did before just a bit harder. That's because once these Jedi were turned, they could reveal the hidden locations of their former fellow Jedi and go to destroy them, or at least I believe that's the idea. Though, let's remember that this is just a short glimpse from my mind at the time around Order 66 if its raid on the Jedi Temple had failed, and what might just come of it, how it could have looked. If this video gets enough likes, I may do a follow-up looking into the years around the time Luke Skywalker left Tatooine and how it all affects that. I believe that could be a really fun one. But for now, we'll see how this Star Wars theory does. Until the next time though, my friends, this has been Dank Farrick, and do remember that the Force will be with you, now and always.